evening, the state television company Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Obligations of International Law on the Genocide Against Armenians. U.S. Congressman calls for $50 million in direct U.S. humanitarian aid to Artsakh. France calls for release of Armenian prisoners of war. The devotees of Western Armenia, Nubar Ozanyan. Testimonies from Western Armenia. Interview with Hakob Chakaryan. Grabas left for Tabush. U.S. President Joseph Biden was elected on January 20, 2021, with a term of five years. Three months after his election, President Joseph Biden recognized the criminal act of extermination of the Armenian population of Western Armenia as a genocide. Taking into account that the U.S. Senate has daily recognized the Republic of Armenia in the territory of Western Armenia on May 11, 1920, as a territory where the successive governments of Turkey have committed the crime of genocide. Taking into account the arbitral award signed by President Woodrow Wilson on November 22, 1920, which officially defines the borders between Western Armenia and Turkey. Taking into account the fact that U.S. reservations to the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide on May 28, 1951, joining the Turkish Convention on July 31, 1950, clarifying the definition of genocide, including Turkish massacres and massacres of Armenians, as one of the free crimes against humanity on which the existence of convention is based. Since then, the state of Western Armenia, recognized by the United States and Armenian people, are pursuing their reapproachment strategy towards the American authorities regarding the application of the executor and the rights deriving from it. However, new political dynamics were formed in Europe on June 18, 1987, the ability and the opportunity to pursue international recognition of the genocide against Armenians while at the same time avoiding the legal obligations of a state guilty of a crime against humanity. The political solution to the Armenian question, which was approved by the European Parliament on June 18, 1987, is proved in its Article No. 2. Article No. 2 believes that the tragic events in 1915 to 1917 involving the Armenians living in the territory of the Ottoman Empire constitute genocide within the meanings of the Convention of the Prevention and the Punishment of the Crime of Genocide adopted by the UN General Assembly on 9 December 1948. Recognizes, however, that the present Turkey cannot be held responsible for the tragedy experienced by the Armenians of the Ottoman Empire and stresses that neither political nor legal or material claims against present-day Turkey can be deprived from the recognition of this historical event as an act of genocide. The reference to this political resolution of June 18, 1987 in the declaration of the decision of the Latvian parliament to recognize the genocide against Armenians on January 20, 2021, brings to the agenda the injustice suffered by the Armenian people of Western Armenia in connection with the plan of extermination to which they have been subjected. The European parliament, which is supposedly a sanctuary of human rights under this resolution, has created a political monster that distorts human rights and whitens the criminal state. The Latvian parliament should not have taken this path. The reference to the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide was more than enough. Armenak Abrahamyan, the president of the National Council of Western Armenia. Congressman Chris Smith, the most senior member on the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee, has called on House appropriators to allocate at least $50 million for food security, housing, medical aid, infrastructure and other pressing needs in Artsakh. In a letter addressed to the leaders of the House Appropriations Subcommittee that raised the foreign aid bill, Representative Smith noted that in September 2020, Azeri forces supported by Turkey embarked on a devastating war of conquest in the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region that caused thousands of casualties, rendered thousands more homeless and destroyed vital infrastructure. Underscoring the need for not less than $50 million shall be made available for humanitarian assistance in Artsakh to support food security, housing, medical assistance and vital infrastructure. Congressman Smith also forcefully condemned credible reports that the Republic of Turkey funded mercenaries recruited from the Syrian National Army to fight with the Azeri army that invaded Artsakh. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France has called for the release of all Armenian prisoners of war who are held captive in Azerbaijan. We call for the expeditious release of all Armenian detainees still being held. 
Azerbaijan's release of free Armenian detainees yesterday is a step in the right direction, the French Foreign Ministry said on Twitter, also sharing the statement made by the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs on May 5. The names of Akhpur Serov, Gevork Chavush, Andrea Nikozanyan and other heroes will forever be written in the history of Armenia in golden letters. The letters have fought against Turk sultans for the rights and freedom of Armenians and liberation of Western Armenia. Nubar Ozanyan was one of them, a talented fighter and commander, who devoted all his life to fighting against Turkish government. Nubar fought not only in Turkey, but also in Syria and Lebanon. When the Artsakh war started, he felt his duty to come to Armenia, to Artsakh, and to fight against the enemy of his people. Nubar Ozanyan was born in 1956 in Yozgat, Western Armenia. Nubar Ozanyan died on August 14, 2017, in the fight against the terrorists of Islamic State Organization in Syria. One of his biggest desires was preserving his military experience and knowledge and passing it on to future generations. We present you the post by the Vice President of Human Rights Association in Turkey, former head of Constantinople branch, lawyer Eren Keskin, on the genocide committed against Armenians. As a human rights association, we commemorate the memory of the 1915 genocide victims since 2005. We have organized a lot of events, and these activities were not banned until two years ago. The genocide commemoration event, organized on the street in 2019, was banned, during which our posters were confiscated and three of our friends were arrested. In the investigation launched afterwards, the prosecutor decided not to prosecute. Considering that different opinions could be put forward about historical events and that this was within the scope of freedom of thought. However, this year, especially as US President Joe Biden has used the word genocide, things got messed up. The Minister of Internal Affairs has targeted the Human Rights Association, which has been commemorating the genocide since 2015. The full article is available on our website. On Western Armenia TV, Turkologist Hagop Chakaryan spoke about the casualty consecutive connection between the genocide against Armenians and the Second Artsakh War. He presented the position of Europe and other countries on the condemnation and recognition of the genocide against Armenians, referred to by the statement on genocide. The National Library of Armenia continues distributing the large amount of literature published and kept on the initiative, support and state order of the Ministry of Education, Science, Culture and Sports of Armenia. This time Grabas was in Tavush province. The literature was handed to the government office from where the community and school libraries will get their examples. The project is aimed at solving the problem of filling community and school libraries with materials. The initiative of the National Library of Armenia plans visits to seven provinces. The distribution has already taken place in three provinces, Ararat, Kotaik and Tavush. Now I present you Gole Hoynar by Agunk Ensemble. The full version is available on the official website of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.